last video I talked about how to plan a watercolour and that I don't miss out this process. And I talked very briefly about the colour mixing that I do. So whatever picture I decide to do, I look at the picture, whether it's a photograph or something in my head or whatever, and I think about the colours that I want to use. Now, one of the rules that I would say that I stick to is use as few colours as possible for coherence. So instead of just using a bought green, for example, I would try and mix my green. So I would only need one blue, one yellow, and a few colours. And I try to do a painting in about four colours maximum. Every now and again, I might go up to six, dependent if it's a floral painting or something like that. And this is the sheet that I produce. And I did talk about this white line here, and I can just talk about that a little bit further. If we look at this sheet here, you might wonder what this black line is. Well, this black line is a waterproof felt tip pen, um, if you like. And I, on occasions, if I want to know whether a colour is opaque or transparent, this is something that I'll do. Sometimes it's really good to know whether your colour is opaque or not. So if you put a waterproof line, like a marker, and then just paint a strip of your paint over the top, you will see, can you see how yellow ochre here is very visible on the black, whereas ultramarine, you can hardly see it. So that's good to know. That's just a little test that you can do yourself to find that out. This here is to find out whether your colour is staining or non-staining. The reason you would want this is, so for example, on my paintings, I will paint a lot of this on in blue, but then I will lift, so I can show you, a lot of it out with water and a tissue, and I'll get a lot of that paint off so I can get the splashes, particularly with a seascape. If you have a staining colour, then you wouldn't be able to do that. So on here, what I would do is once I'd sorted all my colours out, then I would just do a little line with water, a damp brush, and using a tissue, I would take off as much. So you can see that that goes straight back to white. So they are all non-staining. But on this one, I used a colour that I'm not used to, carbazole violet and cadmium yellow. And you can see that I've not been able to lift that off to the same degree. It's good to have that knowledge before you start. What you don't want to do is to do all your lovely colours and then think, right, I'll lift a bit of that off and find that you can't. So that's why these sheets are really quite important. So the colour mixing, that's what I would do first of all is I would mix my colours, which I'll talk about in a second, and then I would find out whether they were staining or non-staining, opaque or not opaque. The theory of colour can be really complicated. I try not to make it like that in my classes. I try to just give people the bare bones, and if you want to go away and then research it further, then that's, that's up to you. But it's good to have a little bit of knowledge about your basic colour wheel. And this is what a basic colour wheel would look like. So you have your primaries, obviously your red, your blue and your yellow. I'll put a little P there. Which means no, two, no other two colours can make that. They're your primary colours. And then you've got your secondary colours, where if you mix two of your primaries, so if you mixed a red and a yellow, the one that you would get would be an orange. So that's what they call a secondary colour. Same here, if you mix a yellow primary and a blue primary, you'll get a green, which is a secondary. And then the final one is your primary blue, primary red, and you would end up with a purple. So that's your basic colour wheel. The only other thing that I would talk to people about is the complementary colours. Now, complementary colours lie opposite in a wheel. So the complementary colour to red is green. The complementary colour to green is red. The reason you want to know that is if you mix those together, so you've got your red and your green, 
you will get a brown when you mix it together. And we call these a neutral. You'll get either a brown or a grey, dependent upon the proportions of each. These are pretty much 50-50. Yellow and a purple, see a lovely brown there. Blue and an orange, a lovely brown there. That's really interesting to know because if you're doing a lot of wet and wet where you're putting water on and you're letting the colours run, you might get a bit of a shock when you find that you've got this lovely yellow, lovely purple, and then you get this brown when they mix together. And this is why on the last video, I talked about trying out a little version of what all these colours are going to do when they're mixed together. You don't want any unhappy accidents. Can you see here are some of these colours, the reds and the greens, you've got little greys in there. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not what you want at all. So those are the things that I think are important, is finding out whether your colour is staining or non-staining, transparent or non-transparent, and understanding the basic colour wheel of your primary colours, your secondary colours, and what opposite complementary colours will give you, and they will give you a lovely neutral. Just to talk about the colours, when I was saying earlier that I tried to do a painting with four colours maximum, these would be the four colours I would use most of the time, but if I needed a purple or an orange, then I would bring in this red. And alizarin will give you some really lovely shades. So these are the five that I think are very versatile and you can get most of your colours that you want with this. For the simple reason that these two colours will give you a really nice bottle green, blue and your yellow. So that's French ultramarine, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, cerulean blue and alizarin crimson. These two will give you a lime green. So this cerulean blue and the cadmium yellow will give you a more of a yellowy green. These two will give you a really nice purple. These two will give you a lovely orange. And then it would come to black or grey. It's important that you don't use black. Actually, if you bought a black watercolour and you mixed it with yellow, you'd get a great green. But I would never use black on its own. I would try and mix my own because black can kill a picture dead. So if you mix your own blacks or greys, the, the best thing to do is to have a combination of blue and brown. And these are my favourites. If you mix these 50-50, 60-40, you will get a really nice grey. Now I'm going to show you that because I think this is probably one of the most important things that I learned is not to use black. So I'm just gonna put a couple of blobs of water into one of my wells. And when I mix colors, I just put a peanut sized blob of each color in the center of a palette so that I've got six wells that I can actually mix new colors. If you start putting them in here, you're going to run out of space. So let's take a brush full of your ultramarine and have a look at that on its own. There you go. A nice royal blue, I would say. And I'm going to wash my brush, dry my brush, and then I'm going to take just a little bit of the burnt sienna, which in, its, in effect is a complementary colour because it's, it's orange, isn't it? It's just like an orangey brown. So this is like two complementaries together. And if you put a little bit of a complementary into, I'll just put a tiny bit more, I was a little bit too sparing there. Then you will begin to see what will happen. So if you wanted a navy blue, you wouldn't add black. You would just add a little bit of its complementary, like an orangey brown. 
Okay. Now I'm going to carry on with that. I'm going to put some more of the brown in. And we'll see what will begin to happen. That is now verging on grey. I'll put a little bit more in. You've definitely got a grey there. And if I put more in, it'll start to go brown now. So you can see that now you've got a dark brown. So if you wanted a dark brown, you'd still use these two colours. So that's just using ultramarine and burnt sienna. But look at these lovely greys that you get in between. Now I use this a lot, but I use it as a black. Now at the moment that looks quite more of a grey. But if you don't put as much water in, and you put a lot of your colour in here, and I'm always saying this to my students, the consistency of single cream, then you'll see that you get a natural black. Let me prove this to you. So it's quite thick. People think that watercolours are all delicate, but they're not. They don't have to be. Mine aren't for sure. So I'm trying to mix a colour now that's really creamy, that isn't blue and isn't brown, but you've got something in the middle that resembles a natural black. It takes time, but it's not a competition, or it certainly shouldn't be. Now let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that. Now look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Still maybe slightly blue than it should be. Let's put a little bit more brown in there. It's really creamy. So not only are the two colours important, actually the thickness of the paint, the consistency of the paint. And you can see how that would create a really, really beautiful black. So there you have it. I hope that helps a little bit. These are the five. Have a play, mix each one with each other and see what you get.